It's National Autism Acceptance Month, and One Behavioral Support Center is helping kids and adults succeed and accomplish their goals. From developing a routine to regulating emotions, Life Speed strives to exceed your expectations from start to finish, and Tony Russo joins us with more. Tony, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, can you take us back and tell us why you decided to start Life Speed? Yeah. Sure, yeah. The genesis of, of Life Speed came from one of the internships I did, which was with adults, young adults and adults, and I saw just such a lack of resources in that area that I decided that was going to be my initiative, and that yeah. was the that was the venture I instead uh, decided to embark upon. Well, it seems like with all of these sort of uh, neurodivergent, you know, conditions that we're always learning more, and the definitions of them are changing. So, how is autism defined now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. The, the short version would be autism is a developmental disorder typically diagnosed very early on, so like birth to four or five, and it's characterized by delays in day-to-day -day functioning. So these can include things like um, sensory sensitivities, uh, deficits in communication, um, rigid or repetitive behaviors. The prevalence, uh, sadly, which is rather underreported, is about one in 36 with a disproportionate impact to boys by about a four to one ratio than girls. So you're saying one in 36 kids mm -hmm. that we know of are diagnosed exactly. with some form of autism. Exactly, and it is a spectrum, so it can look many different ways. Do you think that makes it harder sometimes when we're trying to yeah. do programming because there are so many different levels? And it's a, it's a good question. I would say yes and no. Yes, if you're thinking of the traditional model of ABA, which is the service we provide, know if philosophically the underpinnings are learner-led, respectful, dignified mm -hmm. interactions that are essentially relationship-based, mm -hmm. um, which is the model of care our, our company is, is advocating for. I, under any circumstances, I feel like that particular umbrella is the one under which people thrive when it comes to skill acquisition and behavior reduction. Once trust is established, everything else becomes much easier. Okay, so let's talk about the tangible. Um, you know, in terms of what can, what's, uh, what are some of the challenges for somebody living with autism, like day to day, or for children with autism day to day? Like, what, what's the range? What can that look like? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I would say, again, I, I can speak to specific examples, but generally speaking, mm -hmm. the misperception that individuals with autism don't understand what's happening around them is paramount. Let me give you this example. If you two ladies were communicating, you each spoke a different language, mm -hmm. and you just so happen to have that, that interaction over the phone, no matter what your intentions are, the message sent is not necessarily going to be received. That is a skill deficit, but it also is contingent upon the environment. If you were face-to-face, -face, you can pick up on each other's body language, their environmental cues, right? There's, there's so many nuances to that interaction that allow it to then be meaningful. So in that context, I feel like through the lens we can see autism is their desire to communicate may look different than ours, okay. but it is still communication. And it's oftentimes incumbent upon us, especially as service providers, to bridge that gap for them. But it's, it's debilitating and, and frankly, uh, again, later in life, you, you see things like lack of, of uh, community engagement opportunities, you see uh, unemployment rates that mm -hmm. skyrocket in that population. You see um, risk of financial and even sexual exploitation. It, it, it can become very bleak. So we do our best to, to address that early and often. And what I love about your organization, too, is that you support people throughout their lifetime. So whereas some programs may age out at certain ages, you're there through adolescence, through life, really. What, why is it so important to just stay with people? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for that reason, I'm sure. For yeah. that reason, I think... Continuity of care is key um, based on not only the relationship we have with, with those families, but also us looking. Uh, I just actually had some shirts printed, mm -hmm. and on the back of them it says, beginning with the end in sight. We want to look where you want to be. Where you are, I don't want to downplay the significance of it, but we're always looking to get you to that next milestone. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, we have to take a holistic approach that, like you said, doesn't end at age 13. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely absurd. To think of a person in relation to their age is only a timestamp, right? We look at the, the continuity of care throughout their lifespan, where they want to be, what's that objective, and how can we help them secure it? So, Tony, before you go, what are some basic things people watching can do in terms of honoring Autism Awareness Day? Yeah, so acceptance for me, um, th there's a quote I love. It's uh, Francisco Goya. Um, 
The sleep of reason brings forth monsters. If we can take a reasonable, rational, dignified approach to treating people with special needs in the way in which not we would want to be treated, but we think best serves them, the sky is the limit. And I think that will allow the door to open to so many more dignified, respectful, and meaningful interactions in their lives. Um, that is what I would, I would tell everyone to keep in mind. Thank you. You're always uh, with so many thoughtful responses. Really appreciate you being here. For more information, just head to uptolifespeed.com or find them on Instagram. Thanks again, Tony. Thank, Thank you. you.